Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining my talk. My name is Ruth Ikegar, and I'm from Nigeria. And I'm going to be talking to you about the women of open source community Africa and how I emerged as a star. So I really thought I was going to make it in person, but unfortunately, I'll be presenting virtually. But I hope by next year, I'll be able to make it in person and meet with everyone and network. So about me, um, a technical content manager at Animals, um, a detox star and a people person. And I also love eating cakes, especially red velvet cakes. <laughs> so on our agenda today, I'm going to be sharing my open source journey, the challenges I encountered while contributing and you know, the recognitions I've gotten so far with you know, one year plus contributing to open source my current and future contributions and appreciation to the persons that have helped me so far with contributing to open source in general. So let me take you through um, my open source journey and how everything you know, started. So our first, I originally um, started with, you know, I came from a microbiology perspective um, that was after graduating in 2019. And then I started, you know, learning tech during the time of COVID, initially when COVID started in March 2020. And I started off with learning Python as, you know, the first language. It was really pretty beginner friendly. And I was able to link it to what initially I wanted to do, um, you know, in my master's degree. So after three months, I think after three months of, you know, doing Python and, you know, um, getting set to take on data science, because that's originally what I wanted to um, do in FEC, I got to know about um, all the open source community in Africa and also another community called, you know, the Shikode Africa community here in Africa. And uh, there was this um, initiative called WUSCA, Women of Open Source Community Africa. And there was a challenge that was going to be launched in the month of July. And, you know, I was, I was really eager to participate in it. And I attended the webinar on June 20th, um, 2020. And I, when I attended the webinar, there was a little workshop on how to get started in open source. And um, thank you, um, shout out to Zainab for you know organizing this workshop. And this workshop was you know an introduction to um, open source and how to get started with contributing. And I was three months into Tech. I have never used Git. Um, I've never used Git before. And we needed Git to, you know, make the contribution and a GitHub account also. And during the workshop, the workshop lasted for one hour. So I had to set up, you know, everything. I had to install Git. I had to, you know, get a GitHub account and, you know, all those other stuff. But I was following along with the workshop and Eventually, I made my first contribution to open source using the first contributions repository on GitHub. And this is a tweet I made that day. I was so happy because I called out some challenges trying to, you know, push the pull request. I called out some really, really funny challenges. And eventually, I was able to do it. And I made a tweet about it that I made my first contribution. And as you can see here, they're like all over 204 likes. And I was like, this is just adding my name to the list. Why is everybody saying congratulations? And it was like pretty, pretty um, interesting. So I was, okay, I was going to do this challenge that WUSCA, um, that's um, Women of Open Source Community Africa was launching. So the challenge was um, just like, um, if you are familiar with um, Hacktoberfest, it was like, just like Hacktoberfest, where you, you know, make um, a number of pull requests in a month and then you get like a prize. So for the WOSCA challenge, it was getting a number of pull requests in the month of July, and you're going to win um, a domain name. So I said, okay, this is something I would love to start on with. And 
Wosca had like a list of organizations that you know there were resources for you to find organizations to contribute to and get involved with so i participated in this um, challenge and started scouting and hunting for you know organizations that i could contribute to as a beginner so the first organization i contributed contributed to was um, the gnome foundation so I found um, the Gnome Foundation as one of the resources that was listed out in, you know, um, by Wosca to contribute to. And when I found um, the Gnome Foundation, there was a project, you know, ongoing at the time um, called um, the Scalable Onboarding Project. So that project was, you know, how to get, um, how to make newcomers to the Gnome project, how to, you know, make their experience worthwhile, how to help them to understand the, how um, the Gnome Foundation works and where to contribute. So that meeting was, you know, held with um, the GTC app um, as of that time last year. And, you know, the first, I remember the first uh, meeting I got onto, I was really, really shy to introduce myself, but, you know, with the um, welcoming I got to the call, I was able to like share my ideas that day on, you know, how to um, help newcomers understand the project, because then I was a newcomer and I had, you know, pain points to, you know, um, share. So, I started contributing to the Gnome Foundation with that project and eventually moved on to other projects like the Extensions or Rebooted Initiative. And, you know, I started making pull requests. I know the first pull request I made uh, was about updating the repository. Um, the Gnome Foundation uses GitLab. So I also had to learn how to use GitLab at a point, but I also had help, you know, all the way going on. So another con community I found was, you know, the layer five community. Shout out to Lee, um, Lee Calcott, the founder. I found um, the layer five community as one of those resources listed out, you know, by the WOSCA initiative. And uh, when I found the layer five repository on GitHub, there were some uh, issues, good first time issues that were about, you know, updating the readme um, across, um, all layer five repositories. And I indicated interest that I was, I was going to um, do this. And then it was assigned to me and I started contributing. I started um, pushing pull requests to the readme to update all the readme because they were like about 30 something repositories, if I can recall. So that needed updating across the readme. So I had to take on that tax and after contributing, the community was really welcoming. And I, you know, engaged in the community calls. I started taking on um, taking on initiatives, like welcoming newcomers, because basically I carved a niche for myself in each community I got involved with. I also I always looked out for a need to welcome a newcomer because I had pain points while starting to contribute. So from contributing to the README, I moved on to, you know, creating an initiative for welcoming newcomers and having newcomers in newcomers call shout out to Anita a Human for always um, being my um, work party. Like she would, would always work things out together and, you know, in the layer five community and, you know, get, get ideas um, and welcome newcomers, host newcomers meeting. And from becoming, um, from hosting newcomers meetings, I became a meshmate. And a meshmate in their five is somebody like a mentor. I became a mentor to mentor others, newcomers that were coming into the project. So you can see how at each, um, at each um, stage, I transition from being a newcomer to the project to helping other newcomers, you know, understand the project and um, contribute effectively to the community. So another community that I would love to talk about is the chaos community. So um, the my contributions to the chaos community um, was really, really a significant one because. Um, it talked about um, I had to join the 
diversity working group. So chaos is um, a very a very very welcoming community. So um, I got engaged with the diversity and um, diversity equity and inclusion working group, and I found out about the project that that is a uh, that's that I'll also be presenting on um I think I think um the next day um next day of this conference so that's the badging project I found the badging project and it was really really intriguing to me and it was really interesting so the badging project is um a, a project to badge um events and projects that are that are diverse and inclusive so my contributions to um chaos eventually made me like a maintainer in the badging project and you know i stared out i just stared out with you know engaging in calls from engaging with calls i became a maintainer in the badging projects so you can see how i transitioned from each community from each level to each level contributing share my contribute share my ideas and share my knowledge across these communities regardless of where i came from and what i started with so these are like the three main communities aside the other contributions i make like speaking you know and writing because i also said a blog at the time so going back to the worst car challenge in that month of July, I was the first, um, the first on the list with the highest amount of pull requests, and I eventually got, you know, a domain name, a domain name um, that was awarded to me after that challenge. And after July, I still continued with contributing and engaging with these communities. I was still sharing my knowledge. I was still pushing things forward. I was still trying to also involve others with getting to open source, getting into open source, and also advocating for beginners in open source. So next, I'm going to be sharing um, the challenges I encountered with contributing to these communities and also with contributing to open source in general. So there were the technical difficulties I, you know, I encountered with contributing. Like I said earlier, using Git. So initially when I started, you know, contributing to open source, before I started contributing to open source, I did I did not know about Git. I did not know about the software and the first contribution I made, I had to quickly install Git and some of the resources I found online, they were not really, really helpful because I wasn't grasping anything, I wasn't understanding anything. So it was really, really difficult at the first two months, although Git is still a problem now, but um, it was really, really difficult for me using Git at that time. I would struggle so much, you know, push, I would, try to push a pull request and it would have issues and I'll have to like delete the whole repository and start again, right? So I had that struggle for the first two months with contributing to open source, but that did not stop me, you know, contributing. Another issue I had was installing and setting up, you know, softwares. I was using a very um, old computer. So, like for example, the GNOME Foundation, I couldn't you know, install and set up GNOME on my computer because there were like some challenges I had technically with the computer. So I had issues installing and setting up some of the projects, which you know made my which made me not able to contribute to code. And I leaned on to the documentation side more of it because I wasn't able to do this. And I also had network bandwidth issues, right? Because um, sometimes I would be on a call and I'll be trying to explain something and then my network just goes off, right? And it would even be hard for me to get back on the call and share my ideas. So that, that was really like really, really a problem. I also had electricity issues, which, which um, I had to go from a further distance from home to a working space 
I would always go there every weekday to be able to assess power and, you know, power up my system and, you know, continue working and continue taking up, you know, um, roles in the communities. I also had communication difficulties, right? Um, it was hard sometimes to hear, especially when you're like on um, the Google Meet app has like a you know transcription, um, a live captioning, but you know with Zoom that was re that was not really available. So sometimes I wouldn't like hear what the other person was saying because because of these. Um, um, challenges of hearing, you know, differences in, you know, country, I wouldn't be able to hear what the other person was saying. I also had the time zone issue where, you know, the other person is in a different time zone. Initially, the first month when I started, it was, I, I did not really understand, you know, the whole time zone thing. But, you know, over time, I got to understand that this other person is on a different time zone so even when I send a message they wouldn't respond at the moment but I should be patient with you know receiving um, response so I, hold, I also had like personal difficulties trust me big bad imposter syndrome so I had this is what this was like a whole lot because you know I was always um, I was always I always felt bad sometimes about you know that I was just three months, I didn't know anything, I, my ideas were not going to be heard, you know, a whole lot of things, but I'm really grateful for these communities I found. They were always, you know, attentive to my ideas. They were always, and they, they always wanted to hear what I had to say, implement what I, what I suggested, and, you know, it helped a lot with my personal imposter syndrome. So, all these challenges, aside from all these challenges, I share these challenges because I wanted to show you that even while contributing, I had some really bad challenges, but I did not let those challenges stop me from getting what I wanted because contributing to open source for me, I saw it as helping other people out. I saw it as pushing the community forward. I saw it as changing the world. So I still, you know, went forward regardless of the challenges I had starting to contribute. And right now I want to share with you the recognitions I have achieved so far with sharing my knowledge and contributing to open source. So, one of the recognitions that I hold so dearly is being a GitHub star. So this recognition um, it started as a nomination. So when I was nominated last year, I was really surprised because I was just five months into starting the journey of, you know, starting to contribute to open stores. I was, I barely knew many things, but I gave in so much passion. So when the nomination came, I was happy and I really wanted it to push forward. And eventually I, you know, became a GitHub star as of last year. And it was really, really exciting, especially when I got, you know, the award from GitHub and other perks that I came with, so many other things. It made me feel so good. It made me, it made me push forward. It made me, it made me contribute more. It made me motivate other people. It made me understand that I have a spot here and my contributions matter. I also got swags from the Google open source, um, from Google open source, appreciating my contributions to these communities. Over time, instead of applying for events, I got invitations to speak at other open source events and you know um, help others get started with open source. I have spoken at over 20 um, local events here in Africa, you know, to get other persons involved with open source and you know 
start their journey. So aside these recognitions, there are so many others, right? But these are the ones that I really hold dearly. And I know that moving forward, more recognitions are to come with my contributions in open source. So um, my current and future contributions. So currently I, I host the GitHub Africa meetups every month and I try to also mentor others, um, you know, that want to get started with open source events, um, that want to get started with contributing to open source in different communities and also in my local community. I also speak um, at OSS events like this one and, you know, local events. I try to apply to some um, events and some I get invited to speak at those events. Um, my future contributions, I am looking forward to starting like an open source office hours um, in the month of September and moving forward where, you know, because since um, I started working, it's been pretty tough um, juggling contributions to open source and work. So I, I want to start something like an open source office hours that will have time set aside to get other persons started with contributing to open source. And I'm also looking forward to, you know, an OSPO role where I would um, solely work with open source and, you know, change the world. Um, so if you want to contact me or reach out to me, I'm always active on Twitter. I'm at Ikegarut on Twitter. And you can also shoot me a mail at with ikegar at gmail.com. And this talk will not end without me appreciating these persons that have been amazing, that have pushed me to move forward at every time I felt discouraged that have been there to answer all my questions because I asked a lot of them. They have been there to, you know, help me out. Shout out to Peace Ojeme, shout out to Samson Godi, shout out to Sri, shout out to Ada, and shout out to Okoye. These persons have played a key role in my open source journey and making sure that I be my best and contribute my best and also be the star that I am. So thank you to these persons and to other persons that are not listed here that have been impactful to me throughout my journey. And also shout out to Lee, the founder of Layer 5, Layer 5 community. Thank you all so much for listening to my talk and you know connecting with me i hope to i hope to give this um be in person next year and you know share something else with you all thank you for listening to my talk <laughs>